this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to warp an image that's moving or changing in some way. You should understand the basic concepts of warping before watching this tutorial. You can watch Warper Basics Part 1 and 2 for a basic understanding of the concepts. Take a look at the screen screenshot. We're just going to work on this 60 frame section of the original shot because this is where the effect takes place. I'm going to show you the result first so you know what we're planning to do and then we'll break it down. Let's see how that was done. I've provided you with a mat and fill and it's all set up if you download the project called Warp Moving Imagery. You can work along with me or you can try this on your own after watching the tutorial. I will add reflex warp to the matted foreground layer so we can work while seeing our background and we'll go to the effects controls panel and put the display on unwarped image to make sure we're looking at the source image. In part one of Warper Basics I explain the concepts of source destination pairs or two from pairs in depth. So if you need to review go back and watch those first. Let's go ahead and draw a mask. We're going to combine open and closed splines in this tutorial. First, we go to the frame that you want your effect to start on, in this case, frame 35. Select the pen tool or use the keyboard shortcut G on the Mac or Windows. Go ahead and draw a closed spline around the eye. I will repeat these steps on the other eye later. Now we can change the mask type to none and select the stopwatch to activate keyframes and set a key. Now we can go to the frame where I want the eye to be normal again, example frame 50, and move the mask to match the eye and set a keyframe. Now we go to the frame where I want the eye to pop out the most, example frame 43, and move the mask to match the eye and set a keyframe. Next I go to the in-between frames such as frame 39 and 46 and make sure the mask is following the eye at these frames. I can change the name of the mask to right eye from. and duplicate the mask using Command-D for the Mac or Control-D for Windows and change the name to Right Eye 2. Next, I will change the mask colors. I like to use red for From and green for To. I'm going to go to Reflex Warp and turn Quality to Best that's because we're warping the eye a lot and change the display to warped image and also check the box next to auto hide show masks now I will go to the two mask at frame 43 the frame that we decided we wanted to warp the most and adjust the spline so the eye is popping as much as you want it to. Go ahead and make it cartoon style, kind of go big. Now I'll go to the in-between frames 39 and 46 and either delete them if you just want to interpolate between the previous and the next keyframe or make any adjustments necessary. and do a RAM preview. This is when I would add a boundary if needed and or proceed to repeat these same steps for the left eye and any other open or closed splines that you want to add. Go ahead and add your additional splines and meet me back here. Oh, two more things first. Don't forget to change your display back to unwarped image. And there's one little trick I wanted to show you. Once you have the rest of your from, 
open and close splines drawn. You can simply select all of them by holding the Shift key and then use Command-D for Mac or Control-D for Windows to duplicate them all at the same time. Now with your two splines still selected, change the color to green. You can go ahead and change the from splines to red. Now you can change the names and do your warping and then meet me back here. Okay, now you can see what I did. Does it look anything like yours? You can always take a look at the result project I also provided in the After Effects project you downloaded. Another thing I didn't mention before but I want to point out now is that if the source and destination splines are equal then no warping will occur. You can see this here from frames 0 to 35 and also from 50 to the end. Another option would be to go to global warping and set a keyframe where you want warping to start and make it 100 or on and then the frame before you can set global warping to zero or off so anything before frame 35 warping would be turned off. We would then set keyframes for global warping at the end of the warp effect if we were using this method. Now for the final touches to finish this project. I've already added some audio to your project that I made and now we're going to take this project and create a new one by dragging it to the new composition icon. I'm going to go ahead and add the cartoon effect in After Effects and make some adjustments. You can adjust this on your own. We can now render this out and take a look at our result. This is how we warp moving imagery with open and closed splines using Reflex Warp.